Hello my friends and welcome to this 25 minute prenatal flow for low back pain. We're going to be doing a lot of leg stretching and low back stretching to help relieve some of that tension. We're going to be using two yoga blocks for this whole practice so make sure you have your blocks near your mat and if you don't have any black blocks you can grab some books or some boxes in the meantime but I totally recommend getting these. They are amazing. We're going to start this practice in a supported hero's pose, which is a great way to open up the front of our body and help lengthen our low back. So to get there, come onto your hands and knees, <clears throat> and you're going to take your two blocks and stack them one on top of the other like this. Come up onto your shins and then slide these blocks right underneath your sits bones and come to sit up on them so that your shins are on the mat. Draw your knees in towards each other and your ankles are gonna open out to the side here. Um, you can choose to lower onto a lower block or if you have the flexibility and openness just to sit your hips directly on the floor. Personally, I find this a lot more accessible. We'll be here for a couple minutes to start class. So come to your supported hero's pose or if you don't have blocks and you know this won't feel good, just come to a comfortable seated position. Now let's jump in and do some yoga. Finding yourself in this supported hero's pose. Place both hands on your belly and close your eyes. Begin to deepen your breath. Rather than breathing just right up into your chest, can you breathe deep down into your belly? And by doing so, finding a fuller and more nourishing inhale and a longer nourishing exhale. Begin this internal investigation of your body, of your feelings, of your mindset, and noticing places of tension, of hardness, of resistance. And just allowing your breath to take up space in those places. Our theme for today's practice comes from Psalm chapter 112, verse 7, and it says, They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. The Passion Translation translates the verse this way, saying, They will not live in fear or dread of what may come, for their hearts are firm, ever secure in their faith. You and I are the they referred to in this verse. And so as you're breathing here, I just want you to speak this over yourself, saying, I will have no fear of bad news. My heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. I will not live in fear or dread of what may come. My heart is firm, secure in my faith. And this isn't an egotistical I have a strong faith and that's why nothing will happen to me. No, this, this faith is rooted in the person and character of Jesus and the heart of the Father and the presence of the Spirit that dwells within us. And the more that we surrender and make space for this presence of God, the more firm and secure our hearts will be. So God, we just open our hearts to you we turn over every thought, every fear, every hope, and we ask that you just take up residence in each of them. As we practice today, will you reinforce our hearts? You are good, good Father, and we trust you. It's in Jesus' name we get to ask all of this. Amen. Right where you're sitting, open your eyes and begin to roll your shoulders really slowly up and back. Choosing to move, not just because I'm telling you to move, but because it feels good to move. Honoring the choice that you've made to show up for you and your body and your baby and this pregnancy and whatever will come next. 
at the next final roll down, allow your shoulders to just soften down your spine and extend your arms out to either side. Really reach through your fingertips here so you feel all the muscles in your arms start to engage, your wrists, your fingers, your shoulders. See if you can keep rolling those shoulder blades down and back so your neck finds a little bit more length. Good. And now roll your wrists forward and back so your palms face behind you. Continue to press through your palms like you're trying to press a wall behind you or uh, something else that's resisting that weight. Good. And then roll your wrists the opposite direction so your palms face forward. And again, extend through fingertips. Press the heel of the hands forward, the ball of the hands forward. And then roll them back to face well behind you. Doing this a few more times on your own breath, choosing to focus perhaps on the stretch that you feel in your arms or the roll in your wrists. Notice how that could be nourishing for your wrists. So choose the movement, the intensity, the focus that serves you best today. Good, and now release your hands all the way down to the mat in front of you coming onto your hands and your knees, so sliding your blocks out from underneath you and bringing them to the front of your mat so that they're ready to go in just a moment. This tabletop position, and, and there's so many movements you can do from here that feel great now and can be great tools to take into labor with you. So the first that we're gonna do is simple cat-cow movement. So as you breathe in, draw your shoulders back and press your heart forward. There's no need to arch your low back here because there's already so much weight from baby pulling on your low back. So keep that low belly drawn in, reach your tailbone to the back of the room and see if you can just focus on the heart opening. Good, and then on your next exhale, draw your low belly in, press the back of your heart towards the ceiling, tuck your chin into your chest for cat pose. A few more of these on your own breath, again, as intense as you like. Lingering in the pose, either cat or cow, that feels good today. On your next cat pose, I want you to roll your hips all the way down to your heels for a child's pose, but don't get too comfortable because as you inhale, draw your heart forward for cow pose. And exhale, round it back all the way down to child's pose. And when you need to inhale, come forward. Again, continuing this movement on your own breath. I particularly like this variation because I find it a really beautiful stretch in the low back as you take that cat posture all the way back down towards your heels. Good, and then the next time you're up, back onto your hands and knees, stay there. Uh, but rather than arching your heart forward, press into your hands so your shoulder blades are supported. You're not dipping in between your shoulder blades. Low belly is drawn in slightly. And let's take really big body circles, really big wide ones here so that your whole upper body is moving. Taking this as slowly or as quickly as you like, but noticing where in this circle uh, feels really nice. And then take this circle the opposite direction. Good. And then slowly coming back to the center. This time, let's just circle our hips. Imagine you had a hula hoop around your waist. So your upper body stays pretty stable, and you're just rocking and rolling through your pelvis here. Continuing to loosen up this part of our body that gets especially tight. And if you've been going in just one direction, switch up the direction of your circle and take it the opposite way. That's it. All right, slowly bring your hips back to a place of stillness. Place your hands on the blocks now, and let's step our right foot forward. Tuck your left toes and lift that back knee, and then step your left foot forward. Situate the blocks just a few inches in front of your feet so that you can sway comfortably here in a forward fold. Taking care not to lock your knees but allow the back of your body to slowly open and allow your head to draw down towards the floor to help lengthen your spine and release your back. Place your hands back on the blocks. Now take a breath and lift halfway up. Back is flat here, which means you have to lift up through those shoulders 
You have to lift up through that low belly. Good. And then on your next exhale, release, fold it down. A couple more times like this. Inhale, lift halfway up. Top of the head reaches forward as your tailbone lengthens back. And then breathe out, release it down. One more time. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold and release. Good. Step your right foot in between the blocks now and slide it just a little bit over to the right a few inches. Step your left leg back behind you near the edge of your left mat so you have this long and wide stance. Keep your blocks right underneath your shoulders to start. Inhale, lift halfway up just like we did a minute ago. Lengthen your spine and then exhale, surrender, folding forwards into this pyramid pose. You can keep your blocks here, or you can start to walk them forward to really frame that right foot. And now rather than collapsing into that right hip, can you draw up through your right quadricep, your right hamstring, and draw that right hip back so that your hips are square to the front of the mat. Beautiful. Continue to breathe and soften. Take two more deep breaths right where you are. And on your second exhale, begin to walk your blocks back underneath your shoulders. We're going to find a goddess pose. So keep your legs wide, but we're going to open up to the left side of the mat. So bend into that front knee, walk your blocks over to the left side. Good, and your feet are gonna stay wide, but step them in so that they're on the same center line rather than the opposite long edges. And your toes can point out to about 45 degrees here, so heels come in towards the center. Good, bend your knees here, bring your hands up to your hips, press into your feet, stand all the way up. Lengthen your tailbone down so the front of the hip points lift up. Inhale here. And as you exhale, bend into your knees. You can bend your elbows nice and wide here and find a little bit of movement as you sink down. Let's do this a couple more times. So inhale, lift up, arms lift, legs lift. Exhale, bend into your knees, lengthen down. Spine stays really straight here. One more time, inhale, lift up. Good, and exhale, bend deep. Stay here for one big inhale. Good, and then as you exhale, bring your hands down to the blocks. Pivot your toes to the front of the mat and bring your blocks back to the top. We're gonna step that back foot forward and find ourselves in a forward fold again. You can release your hands from the mat, grab your elbows and just sway here. Allow your face to soften. Allow your heart to be reinforced. All right, let's return our hands to the blocks and step our left foot in between them and that right leg back. Again, sliding both feet towards the outside edges of the mat so you've got lots of space for baby here. Keep blocks under the shoulders. Inhale, lift halfway up. Draw that left hip back. Lengthen the top of your head forward. And then as you exhale, fold and release, crawling the blocks out long in front of you so your spine gets lots of length and your low back can really release. Fear and dread is not our portion. As children of a good, good father, that's not our inheritance. Take one more big breath in and a long releasing breath out. And then walk your blocks back underneath your shoulders. Start to walk those blocks all the way over to the long right side of your mat. Heels come onto the same center line-ish, toes pointing out. Slight bend in your knees, bring your hands to your hips and rise up. Good, reach your arms overhead, straight legs, straight arms, tailbone draws down, hip points point up. As you exhale, bend into your knees, bend into your elbows, nice, deep, wide-legged squat here. On your next inhale, lift it back up. As you exhale, bend and sway. One last time, inhale, lift up. Exhale, sit deep. Stay here for a breath. 
Good. And then release your hands back down to the blocks. Walk them back to the front of your mat and step your back foot forward. Once again, hanging in that forward fold. Good. Bring your hands up to your thighs here and slowly roll all the way up to stand. Mm, beautiful. Reach your arms over your head. Breathe in. Breathe out. Hands to your heart. We're going to take a standing quad stretch here. So if you know that your balance is um, not what it used to be, make sure you have something nearby to lean on, whether it's a chair or a wall or a couch or something. But let's begin by drawing your right foot into your right hand. Good. Evening your hips out, so not letting that left hip pop all the way up, but dropping it down a little bit, and then drawing your right thigh in towards your left thigh, and pressing your knee down and away, and the front of that right hip, right where that right hip flexor is, gets a nice stretch as well. Using your breath to soften here. Low back pain um, has many contributors, but one of them uh, is tightness in our quads or tightness in our hamstrings. So we've done a lot to release our hamstrings. This is going to help the front of our legs release, thereby helping our low back find a little more release. And release that right leg. Give your legs a little shake here. And we'll just do the same thing on the left side. So reach your left foot into your left hand and draw your thighs together. Point that left knee really down towards the mat. Tailbone reaches for the floor here. Spine stays long. One more breath here. Good, and exhale, release that foot down. Good, bring your hands back down to the blocks. Step one leg back behind you. Lower that back knee down and bring your front knee to meet it. Hands come to the floor so you're on hands and knees. Good, sway your hips over to the side and swing your legs out in front of you so you are sitting down on your mat. You're totally welcome to sit on a blanket here or a pillow, something to prop your hips up if you have that nearby. Place the soles of your feet on the mat, knees up to the ceiling, and cross your left ankle over your right knee. Really flex that left foot and energetically press that left knee away from you. Now this may feel uh, like enough of a stretch. You should feel it in the outside of that left leg, uh, maybe in a muscle called your piriformis, which is a small muscle, but when it's tight, it really contributes to, can contribute to a lot of pain in your low back and your SI joint. This pose is a great way to help stretch that. So if you feel that intensity here, just stay and breathe. If you don't feel anything quite yet, start to heel toe that right foot over the left side so that you're stacking ankle on top of knee, continuing to flex that left foot. And you can stay here and breathe. Or you can continue to explore the stretch by walking your fingertips forward and folding over your legs. Take a couple more breaths wherever you are. If you're folded forward, slowly start to sit all the way up. And we'll release that left ankle from the top of our right thigh, placing both feet onto the mat, knees up. And place your fingertips behind you so that you can just sway your knees side to side here. Good. And then return them to the center. And we'll just take this on the other side. So right ankle over left thigh, noticing the difference in this side compared to the other and taking it to your degree of intensity. What I love about this pose is that you can do it anywhere all the time. I will often, when cooking dinner or something, stand at the counter and cross my ankle over my thigh and use the counter to help me balance and stretch. Um, so this feels really good at all stages of pregnancy. 
And I mean, I'm not pregnant. It feels awesome. Like I said, I do it all the time. So feel free to find this stretch. Get creative about where to find it um, to help release some of that low back or SI pain in particular. All right, one more big breath in. And one more big breath out. If you're folded forward, start to crawl your way up. And again, let's release that ankle from the top of our knee. Feet on the mat, knee sway side to side. Good. And then bring your knees back to face, reach up towards the ceiling, feet on the floor. Hands are going to come all the way down onto the floor behind you, fingertips point towards your toes. Press into your feet and start to lift your hips up. Good. If your hips come as high as your knees, you can release your head back. If it doesn't, keep your head facing forwards, looking at your knees, and just work on pressing into your feet, lifting your hips up, lifting across the front of your shoulder blades. Take one more inhale. As you exhale, slowly lower back down. Good. We're going to end our practice in a supported bridge pose. Beautiful way to release your psoas and create balance and stability in your pelvis. So grab your blocks, bring them alongside of you. Good. And using your hands as leverage, lower all the way down to lie on your back. When you get there, press into your feet, lift your hips up, and slide one block at its low height, one block at its medium height, or two blocks if you're looking for a lot of opening, one on top of each other, and slide them right underneath your sacrum. You can always add more height as you go or take height away. So uh, you have permission to find a height on the blocks that feels good here. Good. You want your, your tailbone to reach towards your heels so there's space created across your sacrum. And then open your palms up towards the ceiling as you extend your arms out to the side, maybe tucking your shoulder blades one under the other. And inviting softness into your body, into your practice, into your thoughts. I will have no fear of bad news. My heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. God, we thank you that you know each breath we take, not only ours, but our babies as well. So we just cast out any fear of bad news. We cast out the spirit of dread, and we stand firm in your promise, your promise of nearness, of comfort, of hope, of provision. We trust you, God, and we thank you for this gift. We ask for the strength and the wisdom to steward it well. And we ask today for just a fresh insurgence of hope of softness in places that used to be tight. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Start to press into your feet and slide that block out from underneath your hips. Take a moment just to notice how it feels across your low back. And then gently roll over to your right side and press yourself all the way up to sit. Place one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. And embody a sense of gratitude for yourself for showing up to this practice. Gratitude uh, for your baby, for doing so well at doing what it's doing. And gratitude for God for sustaining us through all of this. I hope this practice blesses you, that you feel a little bit better, and I look forward to practicing again with you soon. Thank you so much for getting on your mat and moving and breathing with me today. I hope 
that you feel better. Hey, if you haven't yet, make sure to go to my website, carolinewilliamsyoga.com. On there, you'll find a totally free guide to prenatal yoga. I put this together to help you understand some of the changes going on in your body and how that affects your yoga practice. Specific things to look for, to modify for, um, props that are really helpful. So all of that's on my website. Again, carolinewilliamsyoga.com. Make sure to head over there, pick up that guide, and get an extra prenatal yoga video. I love practicing with you today, and I hope to see you back here again soon.